All right, we're starting with another video. Today we're looking into the rack and we're dealing with this thing. So we're going to unplug it and rip it out. Okay, so as the name on the sticker might imply, this is going to be a web host. And we have some stuff arrived. One thing we are missing is a BIOS battery to keep the clock alive on this. Now, this has a PoE hat and it has an NVMe heatsink on it and a custom industrial case with a couple of magnets on it. So, we're going to have some fun with this and um, plug a battery in. Hopefully, it'll be simple. Now, when I uh, put this together, this was a case cover that went all the way over the top here. I just trimmed it off flush here to make room for this heatsink. Now, um, we're going to undo four screws here, which will take the end off. I'm going to try and see how easy it is to access the connector for the BIOS battery. Because that was a... Uh, something I forgot to do when I put this whole project together. What we're going to do before we get too far away is magnet up all the screws. Now accessing that connector is not really going to be possible. We are going to have to pull this out of the case. Which involves taking four more screws out. Alright, four more screws out and we can lift the case off very gently. And now we can have access to the rest of it. This is probably going to block things off. But I think one of these is the, that's the UART port, one of these is the clock battery. So let's find our little battery holder here, which I can never open. When they make these bags, they need to make a little groove on one side, so you can get your thumb in there and open them. Instead, we're not going to reuse this bag, so uh, scalpel to the rescue. Alright, I had to do a little bit of research here, uh, but it would appear... But this one here is the one we want, not the UART port. And so, we're going to have to try and use a pair of tweezers to get into this to uh, grab that connector in there. And keep in mind, this battery holder is currently empty. I need to decide which way around this needs to go. Um, I am going to guess it goes that way. So, we're going to try and grab this way and insert in here. Hopefully we can do this properly. It feels like that's gone in correctly. Now I'm checking my photo I've got. The positive is adjacent to the USB-C side and the negative is adjacent to one of the micro HDMI's. So that was actually decidedly not so painful. I just noticed this has an on off switch. So I'm going to switch it to the off position and I'm going to find a spudger tool which I should have off to one side. Here's a spudger tool and I believe I can just pop these clips up and it should open up and allow me to change the BIOS battery. Open up. Now we have a CR2032 battery and it looks like the negative goes to the bottom. There's a reason for that. Now Australian standards have now mandated that these little button cells are harder to get out of a package and swallow. Um, I think partly because of kids attempting to or maybe even succeeding in ingesting them so we need to uh, cut around the edge repeatedly because there's like a double layer of plastic in here and uh, so we slot our battery into the side like this click it down I hope that looks to be good there we go and I guess we flick it on Okay, we have a BIOS battery installed. Next little conundrum I've got is because they obviously wanted to save some space and not have these mounted on the board, it is deciding where I can hide it in this case. Okay, so I've run it round here in the gap under the NVMe thing. I could probably lift the NVMe off and run it under that. And I've used just a little bit of mounting tape in here just to hide it in here. That way it doesn't drop down and block off the airflow through the bottom of the case there is actually a heat sink and fan on the bottom of this that pulls a little bit of air down and out through the sides um, and I've added this little fan here on the top of about the same capacity that blows air through this um, so hopefully we keep things cool but now what we can do is we can put our IO cover back on and hopefully that doesn't interfere with that cable okay we're all back together again now the reason for the magnet fragments, I've got to get some real magnets. 
for this at some point to bolt down so that can sit there space is up a little bit and we can plug her in with poe okay and we'll see the port here turn red on the microtic router thanks to dead meat for that one and this should boot up and start flashing lights here any moment now and there we go we're booted up we'll start flicking away with lights as we do stuff on the network here we go okay we're all done we're gonna shut this there may be some programming involved to make it recognize a real-time clock I'll figure that out later